Hello and welcome back to my RP1 campaign on hard. We've got our our Mercury probes building. We've got uh, about 96 days until we unlock Gemini. So we will have time to launch one more contract before we do that. And it might as well be our old friend, the geostationary comm satellite. The other thing that we will need to do change this around. This is a shorter launch vehicle. Hey folks. Um, so Squirrel, what I'm up to now is an... Uh, oh, then what I'm up to now is... I have my Mercury probes building, um, but coming up very shortly after that is um, this Gemini mission, which will also be uh, dock, our first docking mission and our first EVA.
So I have, I definitely have time to, uh, to beat the historic, uh, Gemini launches. However, what I don't have time, is time to beat the actual first Gemini launch. So, uh, Gemini 1 was launched in 1964. Gemini 2 was launched in January of 1965. And then Gemini 3 was the first crewed mission with Gus and the Gusmobile um, and John Young. And that was launched uh, in March of 65. So it, uh, we're already behind schedule, but we will beat the other records of Gemini. So let us go ahead and so there's this weird thing where I have to use a milk stool for that. I mean I guess I can use a different I don't have to use the Atlas tower. Um, I can just use a generic um, I want small modular crew elevator I think probably So don't don't over don't overestimate how hard it is to actually play this. Uh, I'm playing on hard, which makes a difference, makes a considerable difference. Um, so if you're not playing on hard, then you should have a a reasonable time of it. And we, of course, want red and elevator car. We're going to start at the bottom. This section is a core section. It's going to be tall. Its color is red. And then lastly, the crew access section. There we go. OK. 
Okay, let's rotate this around. That is still a little too low. Oh, that's retraction. Uh, arm length. Apparently we need the smaller one. And still too long. Oh, Squirrel, yes, it is absolutely an exploiter on crew training if you start your Kerbals in a part that you're not going to launch. <laughs> and then... Um, yeah, I, I there's also walking them across the access arm, I think is buggy past 1.8, is my memory of what uh, Alpha Munsai said, based on changes in KSP. So, I wouldn't do that anyway. Why is why is the end of this it's interesting? I thought the end of this had angle to it, but maybe not. Yeah, I think it's the larger one that... Yeah, right now the only thing training's hooked up to is what you can put Kerbals in in the KCT launch window. So, anything short of that and... Any, anything that, that messes with that and then... Then training doesn't do much. Uh, Yeah, why? I thought there was a version of this that actually had a... that had like an, an end point on the arm that had like a, an angled thing to match the capsule. But we'll, we'll leave it like this. This is fine. Okay, now let's bring our elevator car up to the top. That's going to be as good as that gets. Uh... The reason is because... So, RSS itself, I think, works on 1.12. None of the rest of the Realism Overhaul suite of mods work past KSP 1.10. However, if you follow the install guide linked at the 
in the about section of the stream uh, you'll see how to downgrade to KSP 1.10 and then you can install all the mods you want. very welcome. All right. There we are. And let's this up just a hair. And can put a a droop umbilical on. There. Okay. There we are. It's going to be an umbilical to the service module. Okay, it certainly looks like everything is magically in the right stage. Except, oh yeah, I never actually uh, did this upright based on what tooling I have, etc. This was just temp testing to see how this all would work. Okay. Oh, and of course I forgot the reason I went in there in the first place, which was to build the rendezvous target, or the docking target. We've already done a rendezvous. So back we go. Okay.
purge in this. Okay, and now what's the watt at hundred and forty five watts? Can we get away with just some real big solars here? doesn't need to be that big. That's more like it. So it needs to be approximately twice the draw. Okay. I have my doubts. this. Delete that. And docking. Uh, uh oh. It's too big. <laughs> of course, it's too big because it's sized for the five foot Agena stage, and this is 1.4 meters. Now my use of a 1.4 meter stage comes to bite me. Because I don't think RO Capsules comes with the, a 
version of this that is just the docking cone. Nope. That's bad. Also, it's heavy. It's super heavy. How heavy is it? 200 and something kilograms. That's way heavier than I thought it would be. We're going to increase propellant loading on that stage a little bit. Okay, we still just barely have clearance. So that's fine. So what we will have to do is have some wide body fairings. So this is going to be expensive, but And because everything in the world uh, is basically an existing rocket, uh, it's going to end up looking like the Agena hammerhead fairings. Because of course it is. I don't know. It should, like we should just add both as part variants. Yeah, so this is going to look goofy, but uh, I don't really have a good alternative for its goofiness that doesn't involve a whole lot of money. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, also, we don't need the retros anymore. I can access the retros. Yes. Okay, so we'll launch this into low orbit and then we'll launch our Gemini to rendezvous with it. Uh, since we have a bunch of battery, um, oh, right, I need to Check mass. Okay, we're 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 okay. All right, the tooling cost of that is trivial. Um, we'll spend about 40, 50 minutes on the dark side. So 50 times 60 times four, five. Yeah, so we will not use up much electric charge on the dark side. We will gain it all back from the solars. Um, so we don't even need to stretch this really. Uh, Yeah, because it's already got, that's all the AC it has. It's got, it's got plenty of EC. Okay, so what we have to tool are these fairings or accept the fact that they are... Uh, I'm not going to bother to tool them because we're going to pay $2 million. The alternative is to pay $8 million to tool them. And I don't anticipate uh, using this more than a few times. I mean, I guess six million dollars is pretty cheap to have the option of hammerhead fairings. So I might tool that regardless. Um, Okay, uh, nah, we'll do five foot, um, three inches, which is fine. Uh, so this is going to be a, a docking rendezvous target for our seal capsule, which is basically a Gemini. Uh, except I cheaped out and didn't use the Gemini service module. I will later.
The other thing that I need to do... is give this rather more peroxide. So it can hold itself stable and um, I mean I guess actually we can just just put four of them on here. Probably don't need that much. Okay. So everything's tooled on this. Okay, that's all fine. And hopefully we don't flip out. <laughs> but this is this is very quick to build. I'm just going to quick sim it to make sure it'll be fine. I presume it will be fine, but you never know. So we want to launch to the absolute minimum possible perigee and then a decent apogee. And let's launch to 30 degrees so we know we'll have line to match the plane. 0 0.5 seconds that. And then we'll, it'll cost another 60 meters per second to circularize, probably. Uh, the pitch program is going to have to be rather more aggressive. But not too aggressive, because we're going to have a fairly draggy nose. Let's see how this works.
Okay, so a slight deviation on separation, but fine. And we're definitely going to have enough delta V. Oh, that's interesting. It decided to... PVG, what are you doing? It decided to, to insert at Apogee rather than Perigee. Uh, yes, the solar panels are a little dangerous. But our closure rate is going to be low enough that it's fine. So we have 151 left. Uh, so I will be very surprised. If, um, if we'll have less left by launching. And it, and, um, oh, I know why I had figured that, uh, because our, our, trajectory was suboptimal, I think, because of thermal limits. But let's see what we get. Uh, so this is this is basically kind of Thor Abelstar. Um, uh, I'm not seeing the Titan resemblance. Like the only Titans with hammerhead fairings had side boosters at the 120 inch solids. Why are we canted at an angle? That's very strange. Oh boy. That's super weird. I mean, I guess this sort of looks like Atlas 401 if you want to just go by looks. Although the Atlas 401 is a more triangular hammerhead. Uh, strictly conic, this, this has a, a barrel section. Um, see if reverting and redoing this will fix it. In practice we have the margin, but I want to compare what the cost will be. That's better. Yeah, for some reason. Oh, I know what. I think I know what probably happened. The, I think the raycast probably failed. Um, the attach at one forty-five. Yeah, see, that's that makes more sense. I don't know why it was solving with a different attach altitude.
So, Thor used an LR-79 engine to start with. Um, well, uh, the original test model used an S3, which was the the Rocketdyne manufacturer's designation before it got the US Air Force designation of LR-79. Uh, and it used a series of LR-79s, although eventually, after the Apollo program, uh, Thor Delta started flying RS-27s, which were remanufactured H-1s that were redesigned to fit on a Thor. Uh, and then finally Delta II used an RS-27A, which was an RS-27 with a, a larger vacuum nozzle. Given that it spent more of, it, more of its time in higher altitude regions. Because most of the liftoff thrust was actually from, from the gem boosters. Well, Castor IVs and the gem boosters. Yeah, all right, that was just PVG not correctly deciding what altitude to attach at. So yeah, we don't lack for Delta V. Okay. Yeah, that was less of a... That was less of a cost than I expected, only about 200 meters per second. Some of that's from the suboptimal trajectory. Okay. So yeah, we have enough delta V to mess around with our our, our capsule's orbit if we want after docking. Um, yeah. All good. Uh, so, if you're talking about using remanufactured ICBMs, that was done very, very rarely in like the, the 80s and early 90s. Um, that was like Atlas EF um, using like burner upper stages. That was flying... Um, some original model Thors that was flying Titan 23G. Um, I think mostly what you're asking about are do we still use um, oh that's why it was offset. Um, do we still use IC missile heritage launch vehicles? And the answer is no. Um, the last Oh, yes, I'm sorry, you're, you're quite right, Squirrel. Uh, I was not thinking about solids. Um, so solids, yes. Uh, 
Um, Orville Sciences is still launching Minotaurs and all the rest of them. Um, but yes, I, in terms of like the, the big boys, uh, Thor, Atlas, and Titan, um, the, the last one to go was Delta II, uh, and that was that was in the late 2000s. Um, the last Titan IV was a little earlier, and the last Heritage Atlas was, an, was by some measures, Atlas II um, in the early 90s. By other measures, if you count the tankage and not the engine, uh, that was Atlas III. But, yeah, so there's there's still some, some remanufactured solid uh, ICBMs that are being used, but the, the liquids are all gone. Um, re replaced broadly by either the new space commercial launch vehicles or what used to be the ELVs and are now the National Security Space Launchers. Um, Delta, um, Delta IV and Atlas V. Yeah, so the Titans you're, you're thinking... The Titan you're thinking of is Titan 23G, which were, were remanufactured Titan IIs. Um, the only actually operational Titans other than, I, I forget whether Titan 1 ever went fully operational, or they might have been like handful, but Titan 2 was definitely operational. Um, so the only Titans that were remanufactured ICBMs were Titan 23G launches, um, which were remanufactured service Titan 2s that were then given solid kick stages. Uh, given the, the short burn time, um, Tight. As you can see from the, the original Gemini orbits that generally had a perigee of about 150, 160 kilometers, um, to get a, a useful orbit, you generally had to launch suborbital and then circularize with a kick motor at Apogee. Uh, all right, so we're going to build a couple of these. Um, I'm going to have one spare just in case. It's my insurance in case we have a launch failure. All right. But on that note, uh, it's a real short stream because I am going to be away next week through next weekend. Um, so this is going to be off the air for a little while. Um, but thanks everybody for watching, and I will will catch you again uh, when I get back. So sorry that that RP1 hard is going on pause, but um, I'll be back with you soon. You all have a good week and change, and I'll catch you then. Bye.